Hi everyone, it's Ramon Khan from RMK Six Sigma bringing you another episode where I go through a worked example from my book Six Sigma Statistics using Minitab 17. Okay, so even if you don't own the book, you can still download the data set we're going to be going through uh, from my website rmk6sigma.com. If you like what you see, please hit the thumbs up or subscribe. Hello Minitabbers, today we're going to be looking at um, measurement system analysis and in particular the gauge R&R &R cross study. So we're going to be looking at 11, exercise 11.13.1 which is to form a gauge run chart and then conduct a gauge R&R &R cross study. So our exercise scenario is a gauge R&R &R study has been conducted with three operators, three repeats and 14 parts. The study does not have a historical standard deviation or tolerance form a gauge run chart and then conduct the analysis of the gauge R&R &R study and then answer the questions shown below. So we've got five questions. Question one, does the gauge R run chart indicate any particular type of problem? How is the measurement system rated? What is the biggest issue for the study? Is it repeatability or reproducibility? If there are any repeatability, blah, blah, blah. If there are any repeatability issues, who is causing them? And number five, are there any other issues? So I've got the data ready to go in Minitab. You can also download the data from rmk6sigma.com. Okay, so we've got three columns of data and I like to label my column headings as per the menus and their request for information. So one is called part, which is obviously the part number, the operator, and the other one's called measurement, so obviously the measurement that we're taking or the operators are taking. So we've got 14 parts, three operators, and they're called Porthos, Aramis, and Athos. And they conduct each measurement, I think, three times each year. There's three repeats. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to form the gauge run chart, which is a really useful analysis um, you're going to do before the gauge cross study. So click Stat, Quality Tools. Gauge study, gauge run chart. Okay, now this is where my column handling headings come in handy. So part, operator, measurement, and I normally recommend to click on gauge info if you're doing this for real and put some information about there about which run it is because you'll end up doing way more than one uh, study and it's just useful to have uh, something to remember which study you're doing and which iteration of that study you're doing. So let's pretend I put something in there, click OK to form the gauge run chart. And here we have the gauge run chart. So there's two things to look at here on the gauge run chart. Uh, one is to look for reproducibility and repeatability issues. And the other thing I like to look at is the range of the parts. What's the maximum uh, size and what's the minimum size and what's the difference between the two and how does that compare to the errors. So let's have a look at item one first, the reproducibility and repeatability. So here I've got my 14 parts, numbers 1 to 7, and then on the bottom 8 to 14. So they're the 14 parts. And here we've got the three operators, and we've got their color coding. So Aramis is blue, Athos is red, and Porthos is green. Okay, so let's have a look at part 1. We see that Aramis is fairly consistent, part 2, part 3, um, with himself. So we know that for Aramis, the repeatability issue is going to be low. Looking at Athos, and his looks fairly low as well, but Porthos is a bit all over the place when you look. He can't agree with himself, so that will lead to repeatability issues. But the other problem is he's also disagreeing with the other two uh, operators, so that's going to lead to repeatability issues. And looking at the issues, I can't say what's going to be higher. Is it going to be rep repeatability or reproducibility? It's difficult to tell. Okay, so let's now find the parts with the highest measurements. And I would say part six on average has the highest measurements. Just giving it a quick look. Yeah, maybe 12, but I'm gonna go with six. And the part with the lowest measurement. Okay, five is quite low, two is quite low. Eight maybe. So the range, biggest range, is going to be between 6 and 8. And how does Porthos's error compare to that range? Well, it looks like the, the errors that he's making are quite significant compared to that range. 
So it does indicate to me visually that uh, the reproducibility and repeatability errors could be significant. But let's find out now by running the actual uh, gauge study R and R crossed. So go back to the main menu, as you know I like to do. Then I'm going to click on Assistant, and then Measurement System Analysis right at the top, and then I've got uh, I'm doing the measurement, not an appraisal. And I want to analyze data, so there's my box for gauge R and R study crossed. Click on that. Again, quickly enter my columns, operator, part, measurement. So now process variation. It's asked mini tabs asking us, are we going to enter a historical standard deviation? Well, unfortunately, we don't have one. We're going to ask for part the part to part variation to be estimated from the study used uh, from the parts used in the study. So I'm going to click on that radio button. It's actually recommended we have a historical standard deviation, but the minimum number of parts you need if you don't have that is now 12. Okay, and then it's asking us about process tolerance. Do we have a customer specification for the tolerance for this measurement system? We don't, so we're just going to run with the study variation. So I'm going to click OK to produce the three page report. Okay, starting off with the summary report, and we're asked can you ad adequately assess process performance? And the answer is no, because we have a study variation of 37.6%. To be in the acceptable range, we would have had to be in between uh, 0 and 10%. To be within marginals, 10 to 30%, but we're above that. Okay, let's see how that breaks down between repeatability and reproducibility. So the repeatability error is higher than the reproducibility error. But when they both add together, they equal that 37.6%. Okay, let's now have a look at the second page. So we're getting quite a lot of information here. So starting off on the top left, reproducibility operated by part interaction. So I think the same colours apply. Aramis is blue, Athos is red, Porthos is green. And we have a look at the average measurement for each part here, for each operator. And we can see as we follow Aramis and Athos, they fairly well overlap each other. And there's old Porthos again, and he's not agreeing with the other two uh, people in terms of average measurement. So again, it's indicating to me that Porthos is the problem here. And that's where we get our reproducibility error from. And here also for reproducibility, we can see the box charts uh, for each operator. And the box charts aren't so bad, actually. They're quite level. Just the tails on the one Porthos is longer than the other two. And then for repeatability issues, we can have a look at the, the range charts. So this is the range of the measurements um, plotted here for, for, so for each uh, part we have the maximum the difference between the maximum and the minimum measurement for each operator for each part plotted here and again Aramis and Athos agree quite well with each other but you can see the the range of the measurements for Porthos is is he's far greater than the other two guys and here again we have it broken down by part so we can see how Porthos's range measurement is way bigger than anyone else's and look at that for part eight he's, he's way out on part eight okay then we're given a breakdown of the error and the other thing to note here under reproducibility we have a significant operator by part error so sometimes this is removed from the table but here we can see that uh, we're told that at least one operator is having problems measuring a particular part and i wouldn't have to be too much of a gambler to guess that it must be our friend Porthos again and at least one of the parts he's having trouble with is part 8 but I can't say for sure but I'm pretty sure let's have a look at the report card okay so we're not given any warnings we're just given a, a piece of information about how the part to part variation has been estimated from the parts in the study but we had 14 parts so that's not a great issue so I think 
Mr. Porthos is causing us a problem and if we got rid of him I think we might have a, a better measurement system so we could uh, actually just replace him with another operator but I don't have that option so I'm just going to delete his data from the study and see what it looks like That's it, I only needed to do it three times. Right, run the study again. Everything's the same, click OK. And look at that, the study is now marginal. Almost acceptable, but marginal is not bad. It's pretty tough getting a, an acceptable study. And these plots uh, are the same data as before. Okay, the range is expanded on the graph, but we can see we're, we're much better in terms of reproducibility and repeatability. So it was Mr. Porthos who was the problem. We'd have to uh, give him some proper training to make sure he can measure. Okay, so there you saw how to run a gauge R and R crossed study using the assistant. If you have any questions, you can drop me a line at rmk6sigma.com. And if you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. Or alternatively, if you want more information, you can buy the book uh, Six Sigma Statistics using Minitab 17. Okay, thank you. See you next time.